Hey, it's Friday afternoon, August 12th. Uh, Mike Elliott hosting for uh, Ted Ralston, Where the Drone Leads here at Think Tech Hawaii, Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. Uh, this week's topic, we wanted to uh, talk about a very timely topic of uh, drones in construction. Uh, it's something that uh, with the new rules set, with the Part 107 rules that are taking place uh, that are going to be in effect here at the end of the month, uh, it's really going to open up the industry for utilization of drones on a regular basis. So between some of the hardware and software, uh, I wanted to uh, bring on a guest here, for, uh, Chris Bays. And uh, Chris, I really appreciate you coming in. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about uh, what you do and where you're working? Thank you. I'm Chris Bays. I'm the BIM <coughs> manager at Hawaiian Judging Construction Company. Okay. And uh, BIM is uh, 3D modeling in the construction industry. Uh, we kind of 3D prototype buildings before they're built and try to work out some problems. Okay. Well, that's great. And that's some of the stuff that uh, we've, we've heard uh, and seen that the uh, drone industry along with some of the software developers for some of the platforms that are out there are actually uh, starting to merge together uh, with the industry itself. Um, you know, we've seen some of the platforms that are utilized as something as simple as a Phantom 3, uh, Phantom 4, very lightweight, small, able to capture data, able to be uh, pre-programmed for flight with some of the mapping software that's out there with uh, whether it's through PIX4D, um, Maps Made Easy has a program that allows for mapping and others, and then uh, some of the software platforms. This, what are some of the ones that you guys are starting to look at and utilize? Well, one of the big players is Autodesk, obviously. They're, they started with AutoCAD back in the, the early 80s, and um, they've really been a big player in the construction and, and architecture engineering industri industry. And uh, th they are looking very heavily at photogrammetry. Um, and how it combines with some of their other technology. So could you just quickly, uh, for folks, define you know, photogrammetry. What is, what is that really? What is that uh, so, term so, kind so, of encompass? So photogrammetry, uh, in, in my kind of uh, sim simplistic uh, terms, is, is making 3D models from photographs. Okay. So, so the, the, the more photos that you have, the better that model can be. And of course, there's, there's ways you can optimize the, uh, the angles and the quality of the photos that are taken to get a, a high quality output. Yeah. So, uh, you know, a recent discussion that I had with uh, actually one of the folks that uh, works with uh, Hawaiian Dredging uh, talking about one of the projects uh, that they worked on that they wish at the time when they first started, you know, had drones available and had regular photography taking place for uh, coordination, you know, on the job site. That uh, there were some things that kind of got uh, a little confused. One piece got ahead of another and it was kind of after the fact, but if they thought if they would have had, uh, you know, kind of an airborne input uh, to some of the planning, that it may have uh, simplified uh, some of the construction and uh, not caused some of the problems that they had on the site. Do you oh, see sure, sure. that being part of the future? Yeah, it's, it's always a challenge on the construction site where we're documenting what's happening from day to day. You know, we have, we have smartphones, we take tons of, tons of photos now, but we put, put all those photos in a folder and uh, when, it, when it's time to go back and figure out, okay, what really happened in the past, it's always a challenge to go back and really figure out what was going on. And uh, I, see, I see, you know, obviously with a, with, a, uh, with a drone, you're able to get a much bigger picture of the overall job site. With photogrammetry, you're able to get that almost granular data where you have the overall picture, and then if you need to zoom in and look at something in detail, you have all of that in one place. Yeah. And it makes it a lot easier to go back in time and figure out, okay, what happened at this particular point in time? And also for planning, this is what the job site looks like today, this is what we need to do tomorrow, and this is how we can plan to make it happen. Right. So that's something too I think you're seeing. Uh, you have the ability to actually shoot the same job site, uh, whether it's daily, weekly, whatever that periodicity that you require, and actually be able to share that out with uh, multiple players who are involved in different elements of construction or even with uh, partners that maybe aren't even on the job site or in the local community, we, somebody in Europe, somebody in Asia, back in the mainland, and then be able to ask them pertinent questions, I guess, to some of the work that's going on. Sure, or even, even paying the bills, you know. Um, it's it's um, a, lot of, a lot of what we do in construction is just quantifying what's been done. If you're in a factory setting or in a warehouse, you have machines and you have automatic ways to keep tabs of how many pieces have been made um, with construction, it's a lot less straightforward. You know, we're, we're, it's, a, it's a rapidly changing environment. We're building things all over the place and every building is unique. So um, I, I, th I think that UAVs will help us kind of turn it more into a factory setting and, and really quantify, okay, what's going on? What's our, what are our production rates? 
we of course track all of that right now in construction, but it's a very manual process. Yeah. So, so, it's so you see maybe in the near future having somebody who's uh, a team or a couple people that are just dedicated to do this on a job site as part of the overall construction. Is that what you're? Sure, sure. Either either a dedicated that? person that goes around to job sites or a couple of people certified on each job site, so that it, it, it may not be their full time job, but you have someone who's certified that can go out every day. And, and, and now with the new regulations, without having to be a licensed pilot, it, it makes it a lot more feasible to be able to do that. So, you know, we're pulling up a couple examples from some of the software manufacturers out there and stuff, and they're basically uh, showing how you can use some of this drone data. Uh, this is a great example of uh, volumetric information, you know, how much material, you know, I, you know uh, is on the job site. If I need to move dirt, well, how many dump trucks of, of dirt might that be? Or how, you know, what's changed over time? You know, there was this much, now there's this much. You know, so that some of those uh, da data points can actually be garnered from some of the software just from taking the photographs, putting it in there, and then even sharing it out very collaboratively. Um, so there's, there's some differences, too, in some of the software that's out there. Um, you know, we've seen some that are hosted online, cloud-based, kind of like uh, with Propeller. Uh, it's ba they're an Australian-based company. They recently partnered up with DJI, and they have, uh, like I said, uh, used cloud computing uh, to do some of their work and stuff. But uh, you can share the same information, you know, with numerous uh, partners. Uh, but then there's others that are uh, more proprietary to the computer that they're actually operating on. You can only share limited types of products off of that too. So. Um, you know, it's it's interesting to see, I guess, where some of this is going to go with the uh, with the industry itself. But uh, like I said, this example, you know, just being able to share out with multiple people, we've gotten a lot of good feedback in some of the jobs that we've done because they have all the tools, as as you would with a, a desktop version, but it's a cloud-based version of the software. So it seems to be very uh, popular amongst a lot of the customers. Sure, and I, th I think it makes sense that a lot of things in construction right now are moving to the cloud. If you think about how a construction site works, you have a general contractor, you might have a dozen su subcontractors on a large job, yeah. and they all have their own ID departments, they, have, they all have their own servers, their own domains, and uh, the cloud kind of breaks down those walls in between all these different players on that job site and lets them all access the same piece of information. Yeah, definitely. So it's, uh, it's something where, um, you know, safety kind of comes into consideration too. You know, drones, uh, you know, I heard uh, one of the meetings we had gone to a while back, you know, it's the uh, dull, dirty, dangerous, uh, the, the three Ds of, you know, why you want to use drones. You know, the dull being just going out and flying, like basic mapping, you know, but the drone's going to fly a route. It's, it's just taking pictures, you know, it's, you know, it's just quick, simple, but, uh, you know, the dirty stuff, and, uh, you know, in, in some of these situations, and then also things that are a little bit dangerous where you're trying to maybe uh, survey equipment or take a look at something that you don't want to put somebody physically on where you could actually utilize a drone so sure sure um, and, and the, the hardware technology is is evolving so rapidly where uh, you know some of the collision avoidance and um, these other features that are coming out will let us get close enough to monitor something on the side of a building where we don't have to put you know a man hoist or someone uh, high up on that building where there's 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 fall risk so 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 I mean, you know it makes a lot of sense that Drones can start to replace some of the situations where we'd put a, a human in a dangerous position. Yeah, definitely. There was uh, you know, some uh, tower work that we were recently uh, asked about uh, supporting, and um, you know one of the things was there had been um, a lot of items built onto this tower. They wanted they you know, were concerned about actually putting physically putting somebody up in there. They wanted a closer look, but the only way to actually physically do that was with with a drone to actually get sure. close enough. To take a good look to make sure that the physical integrity of the tower itself possibly was was intact enough to uh, put personnel uh, on there to uh, remove various pieces of equipment and then maybe attach new pieces of equipment off of this tower. So it was a, a prime example, you know, within uh, construction itself. So um, you know, we have uh, uh, some other uh, manufacturers that are kind of merging. I think too the next, uh, you know, the drones and the software together. And one of the companies that we had seen uh, was a Skycatch, I think it's right here, where um, you know, Skycatch is looking to kind of uh, bring their own version of a drone and their software to the construction sites. And uh, you know, recently for them, uh, as you see in this great 3D model example, that you can build, measure, uh, you know, there's just so much that you can, information you can pull from this uh, data that was taken on a particular job site. 
with a very inexpensive drone. Uh, right now, the, the one he's carrying is $999. Sure. So, you know, it's, it just puts powerful tools in the hands of uh, uh, folks on some of these job sites. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think a lot of the software is looking at how they can kind of climb the value chain right now. Photos from the air is great, and then photogrammetry is even better. Um, and, and the next part is, I think, feature extraction, where the software starts to recognize some of the things that are in that model, yeah. and, and it starts to be able to tell you, oh, you know, I can see that vehicles were moved, I can see that dirt was moved, um, I know how many columns were poured. And uh, since, since, since we do a lot of things virtually in 3D already, we can start getting percentage complete. You know, you mentioned that uh, you can quantify, you know, the amount of dirt on the job site. If we have, a, a, you know, a 3D model of, of what the site is today, and we have a design model of what it's supposed to be at the end of the job, we can fly a drone every day and then start getting percentage complete as you work, as you start to work the job. Yeah, so definitely, I think definitely. there's a lot of, uh, a lot of potential uh, for the, the software to add value to what the, what the hardware is capturing. So we're talking primarily, uh, you know, uh, photo, video, but uh, what other sensors do you see being of use possibly, you know, on some of these job sites or in construction? Um, you know, there's others that are out there, but uh, do you see more use in some of the other uh, smaller lightweight sensor systems? Oh, sure. Sure. And they're all getting less expensive, too. You know, we've been... Uh, I've been doing uh, laser scanning work for over five years now, and uh, it's very expensive equipment, uh, very accurate. But people are starting to put that on UAVs now, uh, thermal imaging, um, RTK GPS for higher positional accuracy. Yeah. So there's there's a lot of different uh, methods that people are using, and and you know with Moore's law, with these sensors all getting smaller and all getting cheaper, it, it's making more and more sense to to you know let's not manually move that around the site. You know, on a, on a large construction site, it still takes me at least a full day to laser scan it, but I can fly fly a UAV and make a photogrammetry model in 15 minute, 20 minute flight. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, yeah, I mean, things like I said, LiDAR units are getting smaller, lighter, cheaper. Uh, you know, there's, uh, you know, FLIR camera systems. Uh, on, the, on the other end for, like, agriculture, you know, there's some near-infrared uh, systems that uh, can help, you know, in, in agriculture, not necessarily in the, in the construction industry, industry per se, but I think part of this is, too, is that putting these uh, sensors airborne, you know, and seeing what kind of data that you're actually able to collect, and, you know, is there something there that's um, of use, you know, and, and uh, in the future, I think you're going to see some maybe camera systems that have multiples carried on the single drone if these get small enough, where you can switch back and forth between some of them. Right now, most of them are uh, very single uh, single source, single single sensor source. Just the camera or just yeah. thermal imaging? Yeah. Sure, sure. And, and it, you know, if you think, I, I almost like to think of the UAVs as a, a miniature version of what's happening with anonymous vehicles right now. You have Tesla and some of these progressive companies coming with a vehicle that can navigate the real world. And um, you know, uh, as I said, job site is, is a rapidly moving place. So so you might have a, a pre-programmed path, but you have a tower crane moving around. It okay. might it might get in the way of something right. so so uh we'll be back here uh, shortly at think tech hawaii where the drone leads uh, friday afternoon it's mike elliott aloha i'm chantal seville the host of the savvy chick show you can watch the show every wednesday at 11 a.m honolulu time and enjoy how to be inspired and empowered if you're a woman or girl everyone is welcome but it's really dedicated to you and we look forward to seeing you. You can also find us on thinktechhawaii.com. See you soon. Aloha. I'm Jay Fidel, and I'm the host of Research in Manoa, Mondays from 12 to 1 on thinktechhawaii.com. Take a look at us and learn about uh, geophysics, learn about planetology, learn about the ocean and earth sciences at UH Manoa. You'll really enjoy it. So come around. We'll see you then. Aloha. I'm Kaui Lucas, host of Hawaii is My Mainland, every Friday here on Think Tech Hawaii. I also have a blog of the same name at kauilucas.com where you can see all of my past shows. Join me this Friday and every Friday at 3 p.m. Aloha. Hi, it's Friday afternoon. No, this is Mike Elliott filling in for Ted Ralston, where the drone leads. And my guest today, uh, Chris Bays. And we've been talking about uh, drones in construction and how they can benefit you in the construction industry uh, with the simplicity of some of the technology that's out there, the low cost of the, some of the platforms, uh, the software, and then also the changing of the rules with the FAA with their new Part 107 rules that do not require a pilot's license. 
and that is one of the was one of the biggest obstacles in utilization of drones in a lot of uh, a lot of applications was having qualified pilots. Uh, now you can train individuals to actually use them for your job site, and I know that uh, Chris has been kind of leading the way here with uh, with his company and in the future and where he sees this going, and. Uh, you know, so that, that's part of it too, is the next step of getting people qualified, you know, trying to overcome that barrier. So there's two things. You can either, if you're a large company, maybe do it internally and have your own cadre of equipment and uh, trained personnel. And like you were saying earlier, maybe they bounce around between various job sites or it can be contracted out you know, sure. to other folks that are capable of actually providing that information. And then, uh, but along those lines, one of the things that we had talked about before the show uh, a few days back was the issue of uh, surveying and how important surveying is and the quality of some of that. Could you talk about that as to what, to, you know, there's, there's folks out there flying and making maps, but then there's also um, the requirements for surveys for legal purposes and obviously safety and construction. Could you talk about that a sure, little bit? Sure, sure. And I know that there, there, there are surveyors on island uh, looking into this UAV technology, but, uh, you know, simple photogrammetry is obviously not a, a replacement for surveying. You know, we're, uh, well, I'm not a licensed surveyor, and um, I think the majority of people who are flying these don't don't uh, you know have the background of a licensed surveyor. Um, but but it can work with each other. You know, we can we can hire a licensed surveyor to come in and establish ground control points, and um, help get our our information from that UAV more accurate. So so it's it's uh, I think it's it it, it can work well. Uh, having a licensed surveyor and uh, helping them, them kind of get you set up to use a, a, a UAV effectively in the job site. So we've seen that where we've seen some recent articles where there have been some blended solutions of uh, aerial uh, drone use uh, to do this and then also like I said the ground control points with the actual certified you know, surveyor cert, you know, out there verifying this information and then once that data was fully collected you know them looking at it and realizing that the the combination of the two was was sometimes more accurate than just straight ground survey uh, work, and it depends on the type of terrain too. Uh, so if you're in hilly, mountainous, uh, jungle type terrain, you know sometimes the augmentation of an aerial platform may actually be be helpful in getting a more realistic. Sure, um, sure. A, a lot yeah. of photogrammetry is a line of sight technology. Yeah. So if you've got forest in the, in the way and you're trying to get the ground beneath it. You know, you're not going to use a line of sight technology to yeah. do that. So, there's there's a lot of uh, th there's a lot of variables where you, you know people someone can't just think, oh, now I can get a drone and, and make a good map. Right. You, know, right. you, you have to think about um, you know uh, ground control points. You have to think about what the what the ground cover is. You know, um, we we've had we've had job sites before that were basically we had to send someone out to, to clear a job site to some degrees just so we can measure it, so we can yeah. quantify it. Yeah, and other things too when you're, when you're flying the drone itself, uh, issues of, uh, you know, overlap of the imagery and stuff, uh, you know, you need anywhere from, you know, 70 to 80 percent, even up to 90 percent, depending on the type of terrain sometimes, of uh, image overlap ahead of you, left, right, and behind you on every single photo so that when the computer's stitching this together, it can actually uh, do a decent model. Low winds, uh, we've talked about that too, where you know, if you've got trees and you have multiple images and the trees are in different directions, you, know, you can get this swirl effect in, in some of the trees. Uh, the lighting, you know, just in general, you know, is it, uh, having a sunny day sometimes is extremely helpful to uh, brighten up some dark areas. Um, and then how you know how you're flying the routes themselves too. We talk about that. How you know some different offset routes and um, how the cameras are angled and stuff too to actually be able to get more uh, of a realistic 3D model without missing certain aspects of the. Uh, so it, it it is a lot of work in the in the air uh, to be able to pull that piece together uh, with it, that. Yeah. I think it's also. Uh it's kind of fun to look at the things that computers can do better than humans can. You know, I can, I can pre-program a perfect grid pattern to fly photogrammetry and, and compensate for that overlap and everything you're talking about. But if I were to try to manually control something and fly that, there, there's no way I could even come close to matching what the computer can do for me. Yeah. And what's pretty amazing too is with some of the software that's actually uh, operating the drones when it's programming these routes, it's, uh, it's very much an automated type of system. The, the rules currently require the pilot in command to have the controller in their hands, but they're actually, you know, the, the craft itself is flying a pre-programmed 
route, shooting pitchers at the, at the intervals that are required uh, along that route uh, over the area that's needed and stuff. So, sure. you know, that's, uh, you're, you know, you're seeing that next generational leap towards uh, some degree of autonomy in some of these systems. And I think we we're talking to, you know, where, uh, you know, that's something that Skycatch, one of the companies that is out there that's doing a lot of work in Asia, is trying to get to uh, autonomous drones on the construction site and then blend that with their software, downloading the data, changing out batteries, just where it, it doesn't really need a lot of attention of, you know, from an individual, but it can actually fly the site itself. Yeah, and, and the technology has really caught up beyond the law at this point. You know, there's, there's things that the, 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 the hardware and software can do that aren't legal yet. Like you said, we have, right now we have to have uh, someone in charge watching that UAV, but um, you know, the next step may be something that flies on its own. Yeah. So. so right here is a great example, you know, guys out doing <laughs> traditional surveying work, uh, it's hard work. And, you know, you've got to sit there and, you know, measure, mark, move, measure, mark, you know, and just, uh, you know, again and again, on and on. And uh, on certain terrains, it can be kind of kind of timely. So this particular example, you know, uh, and what the overall cost and time is, and then coming back, you know, with a you know, simple drone, programming it and basically flying that same area, uh, you know, shows you, can show you the difference between those two. And then it, we talked, you know, also briefly about the legality issues of, um, you know, is this something, if I'm on a construction site and I just need to know, you know, how much material is there, um, it, it's not a legal issue. So, you know, surveying it for legal purposes is not as much of an, an issue. Sure. And I can actually just figure out some volumetrics um, and I can kind of turn this into information that I can use to uh, schedule you know, uh, removal or if I'm making aggregate you know, to a uh, cement factory, you know, how much do I need, how much am I using, how much is left, and then I, if I need to shift over from one type of material to another, you know, I can pre-plan that instead of be reactive. So that, that's where we see, I think, some of this going in the future with, uh, you know, with this industry. So um, on the uh, uh, future, though, um, do you see some of this turning into, uh, you know, drones that are operating internal to buildings and actually serving? We talked briefly about LIDAR, and if you want to just talk briefly on that technology and kind of what it does, but utilizing drones maybe internal to buildings to do uh, survey and measurement. Sure, sure. Well, photogrammetry is, is a, a passive measuring technology, meaning that it's using the ambient light on that job site. It's capturing images like a regular digital camera would do. And uh, laser scanning is, is an active uh, data collection technology. So it's actually shooting out a laser beam. It's also a line of sight. You can't shoot a laser through walls or through concrete or anything. But um, it's, it's, um, so it's shooting that laser beam. It's cr producing its own light. And uh, you, get, you get more accurate measuring with that right now. Um, but uh, you know, I, to answer your question, I, I think definitely within a couple of years, we're going to see UAVs indoors, outdoors. Uh, they're going to become flexible enough to uh, you know, why open up the ceiling to look at ducts when you can have a small UAV fly up into the ceiling and map everything out for you? So I think you're going to see a lot more functionality coming up pretty soon. So, you know, we've seen, too, uh, had some folks that, you know, have come by our shop that have uh, utilized in these in, um, with the, in the solar industry. And uh, one of the things that one of the guys talked about was, uh, you know, uh, the speed at which he could actually do roof, roof surveys and do inspections. And then... Uh, you know, what kind of made him happy about it, too, was the fact that he did not, he was putting fewer people on roofs. And yeah. so he's putting fewer people in harm's way where there was a potential that somebody could fall and get hurt. Uh, you know, we, we had an incident last year that occurred, you know, it was a young man, solar company, out on a job here downtown, you know, fell off the roof. You know, it does happen. And so, you know, that's, that's something, too, that I think is a, a bit of an unexpected benefit is that, that safety factor that kind of comes into play where, you know, you can utilize, um, you know, drone to actually, like we were talking briefly earlier, to get out and actually, uh, you know, go take a look at something and not put somebody, somebody sure, at risk. Sure, sure. Yeah. And as we're talking about the future, it's not only fall protection, there's also confined spaces. You know, you, you have areas where you're digging or, or, you know, small, small existing, you know, docks, corridors, instead of putting a person down there, you know, the, the technology is evolving to where, it can kind of navigate itself and work its way through some of these smaller areas that can yeah. be dangerous for people. And then also, you know, some uh, blending too. We've done some jobs where we've actually uh, 
flown routes that were uh, dictated to us by the customer, and then they blended in uh, 3D rendered, uh, you know, uh, buildings that I mean they're not even built yet. So you oh, know, there's there's kind of that uh, merge of technology there too, where you're trying to well, what is it going to look like when it's complete, based on the information that's there on site, and that can be a selling point. You know, if you're selling uh, condominiums, you know, well, what's my view going to be? And you can see everything, you know, that's going to be in the in the apartment in the condominium. And then, you know, what's that view out in town? Oh, yeah. So, um, as we're wrapping up here today and stuff, wanted to uh, talk briefly. There is an event coming up on the uh, 18th of August over at the Honolulu Country Club. Uh, it's the National uh, Association of Women in Construction, uh, local chapter. They're going to be uh, discussing emerging use of drones in the construction industry. We're going to be doing a slight demo before this uh, starts for the day. Uh, it's open to the public. Anybody can come. Uh, it's really very timely topic and subject, like I said, with the new rule changes and then uh, discussions on use, uh, you know, platforms, software, and obviously, you know, some issues with uh, liabilities in this new industry and new technology. But it's uh, 18th of August, 5 to 8 p.m. There'll be a dinner. Uh, you can uh, hit the link down below for tickets, uh, $40 for the general public. And like I said, we'll have a slight demonstration beforehand and be answering some of the questions during the evening. So, uh, you know, feel free to come on by, anybody that's involved in the construction trades, or if you just want to come by and just, uh, you know, see where this technology is going, you're more than welcome to come out. So, um, yeah. Well, I want to uh, thank everybody for watching today, and I want to thank Chris for, uh, Chris Bays from Hawaiian Dredging for uh, coming down, just talking briefly about uh, drones and construction in the future where we're going to see some of this technology going. So thanks again, Chris. Thanks for having the show. Really appreciate it. I want to thank everybody here at uh, the Think Tech Hawaii crew uh, for making this so flawless and easy for, uh, for me, <laughs> filling in for Ted Ralston. I really do appreciate it. And uh, check us out online, uh, Think Tech Hawaii on YouTube, uh, Twitter, if you ever have any questions, or uh, if you want to get in touch with us at Drone Services Hawaii. Uh, or if you have questions for Chris, we'll forward those to him also after the show.